Let's go to the Lord in word of prayer, and then we will uh, get into our text for today. Lord Jesus, thank you. Thank you for this partnership that we are uh, celebrating, beginning, that we are uh, emphasizing. Help us to selflessly reach out to our community uh, through the work we do alongside Brian Collegiate. Thank you for the work that those leaders do in the lives of the young people uh, in this community. Lord, uh, help us to um, have open hearts, hearts that are loving and kind, uh, to be able to reach out effectively, not just in that context, but to all of those that we interact with in the community around us. May your word today uh, reinforce that through the power of your Holy Spirit in our hearts and lives. And we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. So all this time, I probably should have had that up there. Okay, so here we are this week of our Essential 8 series. Um, now, every October in Brian ISD, they emphasize uh, the character trait of tolerance. Now, I really like their description of tolerance. Their description of tolerance is desiring to understand and accept others. I, I, I really like that. So like I said earlier, Tolerance is a loaded, loaded term and concept in our society today. And I think this description of tolerance takes so much of that away. And not in a bad way, but it just pairs it down to what tolerance is. I think in this description there seems to be an understanding that this is one of those goals that we may, ne may never fully reach, but that we constantly are striving for. I also appreciate they've not tried to make it mean more than it means. Tolerance is a desire to understand and accept others. It's just what it is. Now Brian Collegiate has a sort of a corollary. They talk about open-mindedness and they describe it as the ability to think outside the box and give a fair and honest hearing to competing perspectives. Now it was interesting to me as I sort of compared these two uh, terms and their their, def, their their descriptions of them. Uh, one seems to focus on people as individuals. The other seems to focus on ideas, but both are focused on the way we treat the people around us. And as followers of Jesus, we absolutely are called to love one another. We're commanded to love others. We are to show love to each other as fellow believers. We are to show love to those around us who may not yet be followers of Jesus. We're even to show love to our enemies. When Paul, uh, in Galatians 5, when Paul lists the fruit of the Spirit, the first thing he lists is love. So if the Spirit of God is working in you, the, the first thing that ought to be noticeable as the Spirit works its way through your heart and life is a love for other people. I mean, it's, I think it's a pretty basic, pretty obvious concept. A primary evidence, a primary evidence of a person's spiritual health and a person's walk with Jesus is how they demonstrate love toward others in their life. That is it's axiomatic. Unfortunately, there's often a huge disconnect between who we say we are as disciples of Jesus and how we demonstrate that we're disciples of Jesus. In other words, there's a disconnect between the things we say and the deeds we do. The 18th century author Jonathan Swift said it like this, we have just enough religion to make us hate, but not enough to make us love one another. Think about that for a second. You got just enough Jesus to make you see what's wrong around you, but not enough to make you love other people who are living 
in that wrongness. As disciples of Jesus, as followers of Jesus, one of the clearest ways to demonstrate love toward others is right in the description of tolerance from Brian ISD. Desiring to understand and accept others. When it comes to tolerance, when it comes to open-mindedness, I believe acceptance of others is the key to this. Now, some of the uh, ideas this morning come from a book I'm reading with a, a group that I'm part of. The book is called Cross-Cultural Servanthood by guy named Dwayne Elmer. In this book, he offers a working definition of acceptance that I want to use that I think meshes quite nicely with the descriptions of tolerance and open-mindedness open from Brian Asti and Brian Collegian. He describes acceptance as the ability to communicate value, worth, and esteem to another person. Man, it really is quite simple, isn't it? Communicate value, worth, and esteem to another person. And as simple as that concept is, it is one of the hardest things in the world to make myself do. We could make the argument, I think, that acceptance and the opposite of acceptance, which is rejection, are some of the most powerful behaviors that we experience. Many of the painful life experiences we endure come from being rejected or come from being no longer accepted. I don't know if you've ever been fired from a job. It's brutal. It's hard. Cut from a team that you thought was your family, your comrades. Divorced. On the other hand, I think some of our most precious memories and our most precious experiences come from times where we experienced acceptance, where we were welcomed warmly, where conditions were not put on that. You are who you are. Come on in. As a general rule, though, we don't live in a culture of acceptance. We live in a culture of rejection. So, you know, those of you who have worked in or work in education, especially smaller kids, younger ages, see this. Uh, kids get made fun of for wearing cheaper clothes or off-brand shoes, right? The kids who can't afford the particular fashion of the day. Um, I suspect that some of that today gets translated into what electronics, which phone, you know, is that really an iPhone, whatever the lowest level that you could possibly get on the market because I'm an Android guy and don't know what that is? Like, my, I've got the new iPhone 11 or 47 or whatever the latest version is, and you're not as good or as important as me if you can't buy the same level of electronics that I do. When we get older, it's about the kind of car or truck you drive. You know that beater that you get laughed at or made fun of because it's rusty and it you have to stop periodically and you know top off the gas and fill it up with oil, that kind of stuff, right? It's a maybe it's the college that you're able to get into. And listen, in this community, that's a big deal. It is a huge deal when we have this outsized influence in our community at Texas A&M, and that's, I'm not knocking that, it just is what it is. Kids strive to get into that. Well, you know, we'll start at Glenn and see if we can get you in later. Oh, rejection. And this is brutal for some of these young people. Talk to some of them who, who are working their way at Glenn and, and, and hoping hoping to get in at A&M, right? This is their, their dream. They're all of, Everything about them is wrapped up in this. This rejection they've experienced and this desire for acceptance. 
How about rejection or acceptance based on income or what part of town you live in? For all of us grown-ups in the room. See, part of our fallen sin nature is the seeming need to tear others down in order to lift ourselves up. I think that's the way we're just naturally bent in this fallen world. Some people are more prone than others, of course, but we, we all enjoy taking somebody down a peg or two, don't we? The Bible, though, I think has something important to say about all this. The Apostle Paul's longest letter is his letter to the Christians in Rome. And in that letter, he addresses a number of issues that the people are facing. He offers correction to their doctrine. So let's not miss the point that doctrine is important, like believing the right things is important. But he also addresses the way they live their lives. So as important as believing the right things is, it is also important to have the right actions and attitudes to behave the right way. So it's not an either or. It is a both and. You have to have both if you follow Jesus. And so in the verses I'm going to read, he speaks directly to the way they are to treat other people. Let's read Romans uh, chapter 15, starting in verse 7. He says, Accept one another then, just as Christ accepted you, in order to bring praise to God. For I tell you that Christ has become a servant of the Jews on behalf of God's truth, so that the promises made to the patriarchs might be confirmed, and moreover that the Gentiles might glorify God for His mercy. We're going to put our focus here. Accept one another then, just as Christ accepted you in order to bring praise to God. These are challenging words. Like, I, I have read this however many times I've read the book of Romans. Who knows? And never really stopped to think a whole lot about it. So let's work through some principles about acceptance that we find in this passage. I think the foundation of our ability to accept others is the fact that Jesus has accepted us. Now here's the interactive portion. What does it mean that Jesus has accepted you? What does it mean that Jesus has accepted you? You have chosen to answer His call. You follow Him. The Holy Spirit has, has opened your eyes and your heart to the grace of God. And you have said yes to the invitation of Jesus. He has accepted you. What does it mean that Jesus has accepted you? Forgiveness. It does mean forgiveness. It means forgive. What else? What else does it mean? What are some things that think about Jesus' acceptance of you? What are some things that come along with that? Pleased. He's pleased with you. He is pleased with you, okay? Accept you the way you are. Oh, that's big, isn't it? He accepts you the way you are. He accepts you the way you are. Anybody else? So maybe it'll help to think about the opposite. What would it mean for Christ to have rejected you? Oh my gosh. The very thought is painful. Like it is genuinely... Think about that. If you honestly, honestly think about that for just a moment, it is painful to think about the Creator of the universe rejecting you. Our acceptance by Christ and our acceptance of others through Christ has enormous implications for all of life. What does it mean that Jesus has accepted you? One thing it means is He took the initiative. Like He reached out to you. He opened. You didn't deserve it. I didn't deserve it. He took the first step. There were no preconditions, right? So it, it, just like you are. It's not based on performance. It's not based on the color of my skin or the amount of money in my bank account or the car that I drive or which part of town I live in. Like it's, not, it's not what language I speak. It's not based on any of those things. It's not based on how good I am. 
and it's not based on how bad I am. He accepted me just as I was. His acceptance does not have an expiration date. And there's a lot of comfort in that. Like, if I'm willing to come back to Him, He is willing to accept. If you are willing to return, He is willing to accept. Not just willing, He wants, He desires, He longs to accept. And because He accepts me, I don't have to fear that He's going to box me out. Here's what his acceptance means. It means that I have value. And you have value. Here's how much value. He valued you and me so much that he gave up his own life to be able to accept us. To make us acceptable. Romans 5.8, this same book, this same letter Paul that we've read from that Paul wrote, Early in there, he said that while we were yet sinners, in other words, before we were acceptable, Christ died for us. In other words, he accepts us before we even know we want acceptance. In other words, his willingness, his desire to accept us is waiting on us. And that should show us the degree, the, the value that we have to him. And the truth, if the first truth is that Jesus has accepted us, the second truth is that we must be accepting of others. In fact, that's what he says, to accept others just as Christ has accepted you. Accept others just like Christ accepted you. This is probably the most clear cut. I mean, those are the words, accept one another. But it's also the most difficult. At least it is for me. Why do you think we find it difficult to be accepting of others? Let's, let's pin this down. Why do you find it difficult sometimes to be accepting of others? I'll share some of mine if you'll share some of yours. They're different than us. They're different than us. Like we like same. We like same. We just do. But, you know, different is good and it's healthy. And difference is not a reason to not accept. Who, who else? To make you uncomfortable. Ooh, comfort. We're big fans of same and we're big fans of comfort. And um, accepting others is often uncomfortable. In fact, I would say that's one of the things that if you're going to obey this instruction, if you're going to accept others just as Christ has accepted you, one of the things you've got to do is be ready for this to cost you. And one of the things that's going to cost you is comfort. I, I, I tell you one of the reasons that it's difficult for me to be accepting of others is because I am so right and I want you to be just as right as me. And so when you get as right as I am, welcome in. It's hard when you're this right. I mean, it's just tough. When you feel so strongly about everything, you know, my kids would, uh, Dad, that doesn't matter. No, everything matters. That's what I would say. Everything matters. Now, look, everything doesn't matter, right? I know that. And I was trying to emphasize, you know, and but I actually act like everything matters. And everything's the most important thing. So you got to be like me, and if you'll get to be like me, then I'll accept you. And go ahead, Evan. Say the things we struggle with are different individually. Yes. And so things that people struggle with that we don't identify with, that makes them feel different. Why? Why is this an issue? It makes them different. Yes. And hard to accept because you so, know, it's not something you have to deal with. That's right. And so the things that we struggle with are different. And so, you know, you may struggle with a particular issue and I want to be accepting, but I don't get it. Like, I just don't get it. Why is this a big deal for you? Because it is. 
And I have to be sympathetic to that and say, you know, I'm going to accept you anyway, even though I don't understand. We, we are to accept others based on Jesus' acceptance of us. And all of those things that we mentioned, all of them, we are different than Jesus. We, we struggle with issues that Jesus never struggled with. Like all of the things that we just mentioned, all of them, Jesus accepted us even though those things are true between us and Him. That means our acceptance of others has to look a lot like Jesus' acceptance of us. Here's what that means. That means that we have to take the initiative in showing acceptance toward others. We have to be intentional about making others feel valued and respected. It means that we unconditionally, Jesus accepted you unconditionally. We have to unconditionally accept others. We don't consider their external features. We don't consider their lifestyle, their habits, their decisions. Now listen, I want to be clear about this. Acceptance, the way we're describing acceptance is not the same as approval. I don't have to approve of the things a person does. But I have to be accepting of them as a person. We don't have the option of rejecting a person. We accept people like Jesus did. We don't, we don't put labels on people. Here's one of the things I think is interesting about our acceptance of others is the fact that it brings glory to God. Just the very fact that we are accepting that we love people it happens, I think, a couple of different ways. The first is that uh, in and of itself, our obedience to God causes others to glorify God. Like, I obey God. It brings glory to God. But also, our acceptance of others, our obedience to God, causes others to glorify God. So my obedience is glorifying to God. He gets glory when I'm obedient, but others glorify God because of my obedience, because of your obedience. It is a witness to the gospel at work in our lives. The Bible talks a lot about faith and works. When we work through the book of James, we talk some about that. And what I mean by faith and works, I mean the interaction between our faith and the way our faith works itself out in our lives, right? That's our faith working itself out in our actions is a powerful witness to those around us. We have to share the gospel with words, but if our actions don't complement our words, we may have actually harmed the gospel. That's really what this next principle is about. And that's the fact that your acceptance of others furthers the mission of God. I pointed out last week that kindness of God leads us to repentance. In the same way, our acceptance of others is a witness to unbelievers. Listen, God's mission, and because it's God's mission, it is our mission, it is to lead others into a relationship with Him. I dare you to find me a better picture of God reaching out in acceptance through Christ Jesus than those of us who have been changed by Jesus reaching out in His name. Jesus reached out to you. You reach out to others. Again, this doesn't mean we agree or approve of where people are or the things they choose to do. What it does mean is that we accept them how they are, we accept them where they are, and through the process of discipleship, we let the Holy Spirit work in them to change them in the ways He sees fit. Which means that that person you that you lead along, that you disciple, may come out with the same habits as you, but it may look very different in their life. And that's okay if it is the Holy Spirit that is transforming them. That is 
reconciliation with God. That's the mission of God. Listen, this acceptance is not based on our opinion of people. It's not based on their actions. Our acceptance of others is rooted in one thing. It's rooted in our recognition of human dignity. That's it. This goes back to the creation account in Genesis. It's clear we were all created in God's image. And there's a lot in that little statement that we could unpack. In fact, uh, a year and a half ago, beginning of 2019, I preached a series on the creation account. You can go back and find that on our YouTube page if you want to hear more. But as image bearers of God, we all have dignity and worth. Hard stop. We have value. We are loved by our Creator. We profess to be pro-life. And, and I believe that we are. But listen, being pro-life is about more than just the lives of the unborn. It is about the lives of the unborn, but it is more than that. If we're going to genuinely have a pro-life ethos, it has to extend to all of life. Because all people at all stages of life have dignity and worth and value simply simply by the fact that they're created in God's image. We are image bearers of God. And acceptance of others, plain and simple, is a recognition of this truth. So if all of this is true, if Jesus has accepted us, and, and, and based on that, we must accept others, if our acceptance of others brings glory to God and that acceptance of others furthers the mission of God. And if this acceptance is based in a recognition of a person's dignity as an image bearer of God, what does it mean to accept others? To accept is to bless. No. Again, we could do a deep dive into what it means to bless. but we'll keep it simple. In, in Scripture, the idea of blessing is demonstrated in relational terms. As, by the way, most things in Scripture are described. But it's demonstrated in relational terms. God blesses people. People bless each other. People bless God. I mean, it really... It, here's what one commentator described. He said, in the Bible, by blessing humankind, God is telling us how highly He values us. When we bless one another, we remind one another how important and significant our lives are to each other. And when we bless God, as in worship, we are telling God how important He is to us. In other words, we're ascribing value. Just what we said acceptance is. Just to, just to acknowledge someone's value. God has blessed each of us. He's blessed each of us so that we can be a blessing to others. Acceptance of others is a blessing that pays eternal rewards for the blesser and the blessee, for the one who is doing the accepting and the one who feels accepted. Let's close with a word of prayer. If you will bow your heads and close your eyes, I want to I want to wrap up with a challenge to you. It really is simple. I want to challenge you to be more accepting. I want to challenge you as a person, as a follower of Jesus, to be more accepting of others. But also, collectively, as a church, New Beginnings, I want us to be more accepting. I think an accepting believer is a healthy and growing believer, a follower of Jesus. By the same token, I think an accepting church is a church that's healthy and growing. We can be accepting without compromising on the truth. We can also be accepting without devaluing what it means to be a follower of Jesus. 
but we can't be accepting without showing love to those around us. Lord Jesus, help us. Help us to be true followers of you who love those around us, who are accepting, who hold high the truth of the gospel and hold high the truth of your word, both in identifying uh, places we need to change in our lives, but also, uh, Lord, in the places where we need to be growing and more accepting of others. It's really easy for us to want to obey the parts of your word that are all about values we agree with and so hard sometimes to obey the parts of your word that are about being more loving and being more accepting and being more kind. Lord, using these descriptions today of tolerance and open-mindedness and acceptance, help us to embody those traits in a Christ-like, godly way, both as individual believers and as your church. We ask it all in Jesus' name.